we're going to take a look at the Rainbird family of rotors. And all that we're going to consider here are the ones that you're going to be dealing with for residential and light commercial. We have the 3500, the 5000, and the 5000 plus. But above that, you can get the Falcon series or the 8500 series, which are larger heads designed for sports fields, larger areas, commercial applications. We're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about the ones that you're most likely to deal with in residential or light commercial. Let's take a look here at the 3500. This is their mini rotor version. And what this is designed for is for uses in smaller or shallower applications to where you still want a rotor in there. But the, the radius range on this is between 15 and 35 feet. So if you want something in the, say, 20, 25 foot range, you could put a spray head with a rotary nozzle on there that would match the precipitation rate of the rest of the rotors. But if you want a rotor and you want it all to look the same, this is your choice. This comes with a, a nozzle tree. It's actually just a little round nozzle tree with six nozzles on it. And this one has a half inch inlet versus a three quarter inch inlet on the rest of the, the full size rotors. This one's half inch. So set this down here. We'll talk about the, the basic model, the 5000. Okay, it's also, uh, you could see it as a 5004, indicating that it's the 4-inch version. There's the 5006, 5012, 6 and 12-inch versions that have side inlets um, or not. And also a shrub version of this. In, a, in an earlier lesson, we talked about shrub rotors and what those are, but there's a version of this. But this is just the basic the basic head, the 5000, and if we want to start adding some features to it, then we'll go up to the 5000 plus. So the regular 5000 just has a black top on it, and you might see a little blue dot on here. When you put a nozzle on these, it also comes with like a little piece to, to fit in here by the nozzle that tells you what size of uh, nozzle is in there. This particular one has a 2.5 gallon per minute nozzle in it, so it's easy just to visually identify. Okay, so let's set this down here and talk about the 5004 Plus. Here's where you're going to find all of your additional options and features. The 5000 Plus has a green head, a green cap on it here, and you can get these in reclaimed water versions with the purple caps on them. So, um, But here with the 5004 Plus, the basic upgrade for the Plus is a shutoff on the head here. You could take your Rainbird tool, which is a little just a flathead screwdriver, and the, the adjustment or the shutoff is the very middle of the top of the head there, and you can shut it on or off. And this is very helpful if you're, say, you're out a long way on a property and you don't have a Wi-Fi timer that you can turn on and off from your phone, or you don't have a, a remote control that you can turn the timer on and off, and you need to replace a nozzle on this, Otherwise, you'd have to, sh you know, walk all the way back to the timer, shut the zone off, come back, you know, pull it up here, insert your nozzle, blah, 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 and then walk back to the timer, turn the zone on, go back and adjust it. If with the shut off, it, with the zones running, you can just turn the head off, replace the nozzle, and turn the head back on and adjust it, and you're on your way. Save yourself about seven or eight minutes or however long walking back and forth. But... Um, with this one here, you know, another feature with the shutoff is if, let's say you have a leak on the zone pipes, the, the non-pressurized part of the system that only leaks while the zone is running, but yet you can't ever see the water because the heads are spraying in the area and everything's wet. Well, you could tur turn off all of the heads on that zone and turn the zone on. No water would be coming out, but the zone line would be pressurized. And then hopefully within a few minutes, you can see where the leak is. So, you know, good feature to have. Love these 5004 pluses. Um, but let's talk about the upgrades. You can get a SAM. Um, S-A-M, capital S-A-M, SEAL-O-Matic is what that stands for. And what that is is a check valve inside the head that will hold up up to 7 feet of elevation drop. Let's say that the lowest head in a zone, see here where we are, 
There's a lot of elevation rise and fall because we're in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. If you're in a very flat area, say Florida or the Midwest or somewhere where there's no elevation drop anywhere, you may not even worry about it. But if there's any kind of elevation drop here, the lowest head in the zone is going to leak water out for maybe 10 or 15 minutes after the head shuts off. And that water may drain out across a pedestrian area. If the lowest head is right beside a sidewalk, and you're a commercial uh, operation, and you've got water running out across your sidewalk, you've got a liability issue, okay? And that's something that you need to take seriously, especially if a, an early freeze catches you, <clears throat> and you've got water running out across a sidewalk, and it freezes, somebody breaks a hip, boom, you could be uh, liable for that, or at least engage your, your commercial liability policy. So we may want to stop that. And another situation is maybe the lowest head is in a, a, a mulch bed and the, the drain from it is washing away the mulch or damaging the plant. We may want to put a, a silomatic, a SAM head in that application. So another feature that you can get is the PRS. So how you would see this written as a nomenclature would be 5,004 plus SAM PRS, or you can just get the SAM or the PRS. The PRS is a pressure regulating stem. It means that there is a, um, a device inside the stem that raises up here that regulates the pressure in every head down to 45 PSI. Super great feature. If you're installing systems, you really should be paying attention to things like uh, matching the, the pressures at the heads. I mean, that's just common design practices because you will get different results if you have different pressures. And um, one of the features here that you can get with Rainbird heads that I really love <clears throat> is a set of MPR nozzles, matched precipitation rate nozzles, okay? And it's it's kind of difficult to get a matched precipitation rate in a zone of rotors if you don't know what you're doing. And what I see out there a lot is that contractors will buy cases of heads with the nozzles pre-installed. Almost always it's a three gallon per minute nozzle. And they will put that same nozzle in every situation, whether it's a 360 degree pattern or a 90 degree pattern. But I know we talk about this in other places, but I want to keep pressing in on you that the precipitation rate if you're not matching that, then you're screwing the whole thing up and you're causing problems years down the road in the plant matter, the turf health, all this stuff that can maybe never even be diagnosed because the people don't know to do a an audit on the irrigation system and figure out why some areas are drier than others, some areas are too wet. But think about it. If you take a three gallon per minute nozzle and you put it in a 360 degree head and you put that same nozzle in a 90 degree head, the 90 degree head is going to put down four times as much water because it's done four passes over its pattern by the time that 360 makes it all the way around. So Rainbird gives us a good option for that and they have a, a set of NPR nozzle trees here that come in 25 30 feet and 35 feet configuration. So what we have here, I'll show you the nozzle trees, and I love these. These are brilliant. These are the nozzle trees. One's a 25, one's a 30, and one's a 35 feet. But within that foot designation, the, the radius designation, you have different patterns. You have a, a full, a 360 degree pattern. You have a half pattern. You have a quarter. And I believe the other one is a... Um, a 270 degree, if, if I'm not mistaken on that. Uh, but so you can set these patterns up and match them and have a 90 degree head on the same zone as a 360 degree head and the precipitation rates are going to match. So if you're not using these, then really what you need to do is have a separate zone for the 360 degree heads, a separate zone for the 90 degree heads, and a separate zone for the 180 degree heads, and then a, another zone yet if you've got any 270 degree or any 45 degree heads or something like that, you're going to need to match those up and then change the run times of those zones accordingly. 
Most people don't do that. And in my career, I've never seen one single system set up like that. Usually what you find is varying precipitation rates. But if you want to be precise about what you do, you need to get with the program and start using nozzles and start designing your systems to have match precipitation rates across the entire zone. This is a way to do it. <clears throat> okay, so some other situations, some other um, options and features of this, you know, every rotor, when the shaft extends, there's a seal right here where it comes up out of the body. That's called a wiper seal. And Rainbird uses a triple blade wiper seal uh, to keep this sealed up once the pressure has fully engaged the heads. That should seal completely up. A wonderful thing that they have here is a slip clutch on the top of the turret. When you're dry setting these and try, dry adjusting them, you know, the left limit is set and you can twist this head to line that left limit up or you can get it just as tight as you want it on the fitting and then use this slip clutch to arrange the, the left limit. As we normally look at it, it just goes back and forth between the left and right limit, but to adjust that left limit, we can just take and move it on around. And if we want to pull it back in, then you turn it to the right and then pull that back this way to get that 180 degree pattern. But you, this slip clutch will allow you, while it's not running, while it's dry, to adjust that left limit. Once it's running, I probably wouldn't do that if I were you. You can feel it. I've tried to do it myself just to see, and you can feel it like tearing into those gears. So I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't try to use that slip clutch while the head is running. Um, one of the great things about the nozzles for Rainbird rotors, and this is the typical nozzle tree that you're going to get. We've, we talk about nozzle trees in other places, but you have a number of different choices here in gallon per minute um, and also a, a four low angle nozzles, which brings a trajectory down in case you're on top of a hill or a high wind situation and you want to keep it from blowing away. A lower trajectory nozzle may be the... the um, the fix for that. But the nozzles have a trademark um, option feature. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's called the rain curtain. And if you look at the pattern on their rotors as they're running, you see not only the stream that's shooting for 30 to 40 feet of distance, but it's also dropping a curtain of rain along that pattern. And it does a really good job with not only the furthest reaches of its radius, but also the short and middle areas as well. So fantastic head. Um, you can get a steel shaft. You know, this the steel shaft here as it pulls up. Uh, you can get this in steel for high vandalism areas or, you know, commercial areas where maybe a chance of a head getting kicked over or hit or something. The steel shaft can help uh, mitigate those problems. And Rainbird offers a, a five-year trade warranty on these heads. So if you're a technician out in the field and, you know, things happen, uh, the heads get run over, hit, or they just die inside sometimes because of grit that's coming through the water system gets lodged in them. But there's a five-year trade warranty. Chances are you're probably never really going to have to replace these just for it dying on its own. But there's a date printed on the shaft here that you can take it back to your distributor and get that replaced for you. So let's take a look here at a quick video of adjusting the Rainbird 5000. And I want to just uh, for a moment touch on my teaching of adjusting the set limit of a rotor using a set of uh, channel lock pliers. Okay, maybe it's controversial to some. I noticed that, you know, I was looking through some of the manufacturer's videos and they recommend, you know, if you want to change the set limit, in this case, the left limit on a Rainbird, that you grab the shaft with your hands and try to make that turn. Okay, that's great. That's, that's my best case scenario. If you can change that left limit by grabbing the shaft with your hands and turning it, then great, do that. I live in an area and I work in an area that's pretty much a 100% clay content and it seals up like content, uh, like concrete around those heads. So it, you pretty much have to grab a hold of that shaft with the uh, channel locks and adjust it. You just got to be really careful. Maybe the first couple times that you do it, you're going to crack that plastic and have to replace the head. But this is something that you need to acquire, a skill you need to acquire really quickly 
because the only other alternative is to dig up the top two or three inches of dirt around the top of this head and reach down with your channel locks and adjust the positioning of the body by grabbing the actual body of the rotor instead of the shaft. But let me tell you, just from a, a practicality standpoint, when you're out here in the field doing adjustments all day, you know, in, in the immortal words of Sugar Brown, ain't nobody got time for that. You're not going to be able to dig up the, each head that you need to adjust. Just learn how to use those channel locks. And on this particular head, it's just fine. A lot of other heads, it's just fine. They're sturdy enough to take it. I'll tell you which ones to not use it on, okay? But on the Rainbird 5000, let's go ahead and take a look here at this video and we're going to watch it run. And um, like I've mentioned, the left limit is fixed, but we want to see. So you can twist the top of this turret around to quickly see what the limits are. But if you really want to see exactly where it stops, you've got to let the gears carry it to that limit, boom, and then come back. So I, I like to see it twice to make sure because not every click on it, every time it goes around are not going to be precisely the same. Every other click is going to be slightly off every time it comes back around to that limit. So here we are just watching it and I decide, okay, I need to change the left. I could reach down here with my channel locks, grab a hold of the body of the rotor and change that since it's on a stalk here or dig up the top couple of inches of ground. But me, I'm telling you, if you can practice and not crack that plastic and use channel locks to adjust that left limit, do it. And now we need to look at the right limit. <clears throat> well, here we're just, you know, checking the uh, the left limit adjustment. That looks good. So if we're going to do the right limit, we'll take our little Rainbird tool here, a flathead screwdriver, put it in an arc adjustment slot at the six o'clock position on the head. That wasn't a terribly good angle to see that happening, but it, I'm pretty sure you understand what we're talking about here um, to make that right adjustment. And now here we are adjusting the, the set screw for the nozzle. If you run that down, um, it impedes the flow of water and shortens up the radius of the throw and fattens up the, 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 uh, the spray. So that's basically just an easy adjustment on the Rainbird 5000.